It's another vintage ionizer, this time made by Kenwood. Quite stylish, it's very curvaceous, and it has the four emitter holes, the needles behind them at the top. Plus, I'm noticing that the green indicator is a bit of film across it. That's That feels like taking the cover off a new product. Excellent. So let's just cut straight to the chase and open this, because we know more or less what's involved in ionizer. So there is a sort of film here covering... Oh no, it's anti-tamper screws. Didn't know about that. One moment, please. One anti-tamper triangular screwdriver bit. It kind of fits. Just two screws, but look about holding the base on. Maybe there are more hidden under that felt pad. It, I should say it says air ionizer, spelt with a Z or a Z, AC200, uh, 0.5 watt, which does suggest it's a voltage multiplier. Now, is the base going to come off? Maybe the base isn't going to come off. Maybe there are other screws. Let's try the spudger and see if it's clipped in as well. So I shall just slip this under here and prize. That's not coming off. Is it just clipped in or are there extra hidden screws? I'm going to have to take this whole pad off. One moment, please. Four more screws. They are out now and here we go. It is a capacitor-based voltage multiplier. Is this thing going to slide out now? Is there anything else holding this in? Is it glued in? Hopefully not glued in. Oh, here we go, here we go. So here it is. Oh, it's actually a, an orange neon under a green indicator. Lots of flux. Quite a lot of stages. I thought it was just going to be the usual 22 stages, but it's not. Uh, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. That is much higher than normal. What is this capacitor for down here? Is that another stage or is that just across the mains supply? I shall uh, reverse engineer this. I shall draw the schematic out, but not the whole thing, because it would just be very repetitive. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. No pictures this time, because it's actually too big. It wouldn't really fit under my normal photographing area, because the circuit board is really quite big. But here is what we have. We have the incoming supply, we've got the NEAN indicator with a very generous 270k resistor across it. And then up here, because I drew this vertically, I wrote that vertically, just ignore that. Uh, but this capacitor here, and only this capacitor here, let's highlight that in a different colour, because that would be better. This capacitor here is the odd one out. It's a, a Class X2 capacitor. It is, I'm going to have to hold this very gingerly because I had it on to test it. Uh, it's this capacitor here is the first part of the stage. And they've probably used that just because it is a safety device, effectively, because it is next to the, the sort of live incoming supply. But the, it's 22 nanofarad uh, rated X2, which uh, is 250 volts AC, but it's actually got a much higher DC voltage rating. The other ones are 22 nanofarad, but they're only 400 volts. Normally, I'd expect these to be 630 volts, but having said that, it works. It may be that because as it's losing slight efficiency along it, it's not the full uh, voltage across them. The diodes, I would guess, are 1N4007. I didn't actually check that. I should check that. He said, picking it up gingerly again, so to avoid getting a shock off a, a high voltage voltage multiplier, uh, Mm hmm double O, four, double O, double O, uh, where is it? There's got to be a seven there somewhere. Every single one is turned in such a way that I can't see the last digit. But let's make a guess. One N4, double O, seven, because that is a very classic 1000 volt diode and it just suits this application very well. So 14 stages, I've only shown three stages here, um, which 14 stages is very generous. And then the output, the high negative voltage here, goes via two 10 meg ohm resistors to the sharp emitter points. This is where the carbon fibre emitter would be good. Now the base is very attractive. It's The actual moulding is quite smart. And it's notable that they've got a recess in here, a little housing, that looks as though it's designed to take a potted module as well, to give them the option of either using this version the, with the circuit board for the European supplies, or perhaps in the future an electronic supply. This is probably quite an old unit. Um, 
Anything else worth mentioning? This 100 ohm resistor is quite odd. It will limit the inrush current to the voltage multiplier. Maybe act as a fuse, but um, that is all I can really think there. Now, I have tried it out, and it is working. Now, I'm going to have to put this out of the way. Perhaps zoom out a bit. Uh, focus up to a more sensible height. Find something to put this on, because it is high voltage. Ugh. He said hold it gingerly by the side and I shall plug this in noting that when I do plug it in this whole thing will become live not just at mains voltage but will also have high voltage on the output but at restricted current uh, note the plug is not wired very well it must come from the era that the plugs didn't come pre-fitted to stuff so I've plugged it in the neon is glowing it's worth mentioning that the tip in here let, let me just point this up the inside and show you it I'll just nudge that to the side, precariously. When I shine a light up in here, see the top of the neon indicator there? It is a, a little crisscross, which reduces light even more. It was very, very dim. But anyway, now I've got this here. Noting this is live electrical equipment. Don't do this. It's dangerous. I feel need to say that these days. Particularly given the stance YouTube has taken against some technical channels. Mine. Uh, here's the meter. And I'm going to connect the negative lead onto the local grounded connection of my soldier iron here, the chassis, and then I'm going to hold this in front. And depending on the emitter it's put in front of, it will be a rather variable voltage. The best needle is the winning here with 12 volts there. So it's not a bad output. Um, not as good as the little electronic modules, but this is the advantage of ultra simplicity. I shall unplug this now, but note that it still holds a charge. Anything? Nothing. Thought it might fizz, but that is it. I shall hold it. This is unplugged now. The neon is off. I shall just turn it over and let you see the back of the circuit board again. Notice the flux where they've soldered the needles in. Oh, that's another thing that's worth mentioning. And the cables, the mains cables. They were the last things that got soldered in this. The needles have been preformed and then they've been placed into the circuit board and then the solder's been flowed along them. My preference would have been to actually have the needles sticking out beyond the tip, but because of safety, because we kiddies might impale them uh, themselves in these it's not really practical to do that. But what you could do, you could get the little carbon fibre tufts, you could actually stuff them down the needles and boost this to a much higher level, much greater efficiency of uh, ion emission. But that is it. It's the Electrostatic Ioniser by Kenwood. Is that right, Kenwood? Very stylish case, super stylish case. Um, and it puts electrostatic charge in the air that precipitates dust, mould, spores, pollen, uh, bacteria, viruses, it just puts a charge on them and they settle out to adjacent surfaces where they are safely out of the air to avoid being breathed in. But that was an interesting one to take to bits. Nicely engineered, quite unusually well engineered actually. That was another joy to take to bits. Very good. Bonus extra footage. I have added a carbon fibre emitter on over the middle needle because I found that the recessed needles actually impaired the function. Maybe it's just dirty down there and it just needs a good clean out with a set of cotton bud and isopropanol. But uh, I've added the carbon fibre emitter so it sticks up above the end of that. And if I now place that on the table and I ground the connection, whereas the unit was quite high output just in open air, it was impeded greatly by the case, but now it's back up to that sort of level of output. Um, when I put the, let me move this meter over, somewhere you can see it. When I put the uh, positive tip, it's still not as good as the little high frequency modules, but it's still actually a pretty good output. Good uh, generous voltage coming off their high negative voltage with respect to ground. But yes, interesting. Very, a very smart, stylish device that, um, that does actually have decent circuitry in it. That's quite refreshing.